For all it contributes to the local athletic landscape, high school track and field gets a little shorted, which is what makes the Hilton Invitational so special. Simply put, they do things differently in Hilton. The majority of those participating at the Running Cadet Classic would argue that they do things best. Um, this is my favorite meet of the year. I mean, um, it's so hyped. I like how they uh, advertise it this year. You know, I'm always run good here. You know, they take care of the athletes. You know, um, we don't be here all day. So um, I, I love to meet here. The Running Cadet Classic is the track and field equivalent of a day-night doubleheader. There are events all afternoon, but the best is saved for last. Because after the sun sets, the meet's top participants are invited to perform under the lights in the Saturday Night Showdown. Philosophically, everyone's always trying to give track their fair share. This, don't you think, kind of goes a long way into making that happen? No, you got to, you know, you got to make it stand out. You got to make it different than everything else. You got to make it exciting. Um, provide the environment that will make the kids perform their best. A little Hollywood, right? That's what we're trying to do. They build a pole vault pit in the infield of the track, front and center. It's the featured field event. Fifteen vaulters took part in the showdown with a starting height of 12 feet. 11 of the starting 15 made it to 12-6. Meanwhile, events took place all around them. One of the section's truly great runners is HAC's Isabel Hertelin Booker. The Pittsburgh-bound senior was the girl to beat in the 100-meter hurdle showdown. Isabel outran Canadagla's Christine Lytle in 15.02, just about a half second off her own meet record. I'm happy with my time, but I was hoping to beat my meet record, which was a 14.9 something. Yeah. But overall, I mean, I'm happy to run, and especially at such, this is my favorite meet, and I'm happy to run here. And this has been a great experience. I wish I wish I could have ran twice, because I love it here. Well, you kind of did, because like the next oh, race you're doing the 100, right so after. that's kind of tough. That, that was the first time I've ever ran back to back, and I started cramping up afterwards, probably because I didn't eat enough or drink enough, and so I almost didn't run, but I was like, I'm gonna run, why wouldn't I? I've, I'm going against like my best friend Maddie, who's the best competition out there. I was like, whatever happens, happens. If I cramp up in the meet, at least I tried. Hurdle and Booker took second in the 100 behind her buddy, Madeline Cop, Spencerport. Just another day on the track for Maddie, who won the 100, 200, and set a meet record in the 400 meter runs. Like, I know you do the other two distances. Is the 100 one of your favorites? No, it's not. I just do it as an extra. I like to have it in meets, to, so I, because usually I run it before the 400, uh -huh. so I have it to, like, as a warm up, sort of. So the 100 is not really in your future? No, I just, I just did it today to do it. <laughs> All right, hey, what do you think of this meet? I like it. I like how they do the showdown thing. It's cool. Meanwhile, back at the pole vault, Jacob Tristy of Gates Chilai was clearing the bar at 13 feet. The field of 15 was trimmed to the final four, attempting 13-6. The hurdles were raised to accommodate the boys' 110-meter high hurdle showdown, where Northeast Northwest prep sprinter Amir Rogers was favored. Running in the red in lane four, Amir posted his second best time in the event and found room for improvement. I hit a lot of hurdles, so my goal is like to clean it up. You know, fourteen days, whatever. Still got came out with a victory, so. So, so it's really it's like a matter of hurdles you're trying to keep your feet off of, right? Um, yeah. Um, more hurdles you hit, it slows your momentum down. So, uh, you know, the cleaning of the race is faster time. How many do you think you hit? I say three, which isn't that bad, but it was the ones you know I needed. You know, it was like six, seven, and eight. Meet records were set in both the Glavin races, run in the memory of Pete Glavin, the former McQuaid standout who died of cancer three years ago at the age of 47. In all, 46 different high schools were represented at the Running Cadet Classic. The boys' pole vault competition came down to junior Ryan Ellis of Gates, who finished second to a familiar foe Canandaigua senior Sam Harding. You two guys probably see a lot of each other. What do you think of the battle? Yeah, he's a main competition in section five. 
I, I love it. Keeps me, keeps me going higher. Harding gave little indication that he was on top of his game early. I was having trouble coming in. Uh, I feel like I just wasn't running. My wasn't running right. My mark was off by a little bit, and so I just had trouble honing it in and being able to get being able to get where I was consistent. Patience paid off as Harding soared to a meet and school record vault, 14 feet, three inches. Fourteen two has been the record since 1977. So, I mean, we've had a couple vaulters get close to it, but I mean, it's just a fantastic feeling. I mean, it's what we've been working on for four decades. What do you think of this meet, you know, getting it out here in the infield and everybody watching you? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, I, any support that you can get is good support. I, it's, it's fantastic to be here under the lights, middle of the field. It's a good day. On the girls' side, Warsaw's Karen Obel broke her own Section 5 record in the pole vault, going 12 feet 7 inches, which is 7 inches better than the next best in the state this year.